The face of the automotive world is changing forever. Fossil fuel powered cars are on their way out, electric cars are on the rise. But how much has actually changed in the last five years? Well, let's find out. We'll look at five key areas to paint the picture of how electric cars have developed since 2015. First up, the number of models available. In 2015, there were less than 30 electric or plug-in hybrid models available in Europe, including early editions of cars like the BMW i3 and the Nissan Leaf. By 2018, this number had jumped to 154 models, and by the end of 2020, manufacturers alone will be offering 214 plus models. And according to analysis, by 2025, electric vehicles will make up 22% of the vehicles produced in the EU, and close to 50% come 2030. Which leads us nicely onto topic two, sales. Since 2015, electric vehicle sales in Europe have been growing at a rate of around 41% annually, with fossil fuel sales continuing to drop year on year, with a 5% drop in just the last year alone. There were 736,000 battery-powered or assisted vehicles on the road in 2015, by the end of 2018, 2.9 million, and a predicted 4 million in 2020. And if you break that down even further month by month, January of 2020 saw a rise in sales of 243% on January in 2019, with EVs now making up 13% of the European automotive market share. Now looking at the more practical side of EV ownership over the last five years, how much has the range improved? Battery capacity and range has seen a significant improvement across the board since 2015. Let's see how much by looking at two models that existed in 2015 and are still available today, albeit with updated tech, the Nissan Leaf and the BMW i3. The 2015 Leaf had a 22 kilowatt hour battery with a max range of 135 kilometers or 84 miles. Fast forward to 2019 and the most recent Leaf E Plus comes with a 62 kilowatt hour battery and a max range of 384 kilometers or 239 miles a monumental improvement in just four years. It's the same story with the BMW i3, with the current full electric version offering 160 kilometers more range than the 2015 range extended version. And it's not just range and battery size that's improved with electric vehicles since then, nor to 60 miles per hour times are lower and charge times have decreased significantly pretty much across the board. 30 minutes for 280 plus miles in some cases versus 80% of 84 miles in the same time in 2015. Those increases and developments also fit in line with our own race cars, which have gone from a 28 kilowatt hour battery in season one of Formula E to a 54 kilowatt hour battery for the current generation of car. The battery is roughly the same weight and volume, but can hold more or less double the energy. Huge advancements in just five years. But there's not enough charging points, we hear you say. Well, that leads us on nicely to the penultimate point, charging infrastructure. Let's keep this simple and just look at the difference in number of public charging points available in Europe five years ago versus how many there are today. In 2015, there were just over 48,000 public points. And by July 2019, there were a recorded 170,000 points a 353% rise and a 502% rise in fast and rapid charges available. But how does that look on the road in terms of range anxiety? Well, in 2015, for every 100 kilometers of road on average, there were five public charges. And at the end of 2019, for every 100 kilometers, there are 23. And that's not including the readily more available private charges installed at people's homes, at hotels or offices, which take a significant strain off the public charges. Finally, and the most important of all, is the huge reduction in carbon emissions since 2015. The national average in the US is 4.8 tonnes of equivalent emissions for a typical EV per year. And that's at the top end globally, in a country where most of the electricity used to charge and power an electric vehicle comes from fossil fuels. It's substantially less than that in places like Europe and New Zealand, where more of the grid is powered by renewable energy. So compare that to the average fossil fuel powered car, which produces 11.4 tons of CO2 per year, almost two and a half times that of an electric vehicle. With the increasing renewable energy supplying national grids making no positive difference to that annual emission. The rise in electric vehicle sales alongside the drop in fossil fuel vehicle sales equals a whole lot of carbon emissions saved. And before you say that the EV production process creates more CO2 than a fossil fuel powered car, that is currently true, but 
this excess is cancelled out in as little as 18 months of driving for larger long-range EVs and as little as 6 months for shorter range smaller EVs. So that 205% increase in electric vehicles in Europe since 2015 doesn't just show a rise in sales but a huge reduction in emissions if these sales were on fossil fuel powered cars instead. Over the life cycle of a car, electric vehicles can emit up to 50% less emissions than fossil fuel powered cars, with that number only going up as technology develops and renewable energy supplies more national grids. One aspect that we haven't mentioned but has almost definitely played a huge part in the uptake of EVs is the idea that they're no longer a box ticking exercise for manufacturers and the development of battery technology and powertrains has created a whole new world of car performance, doing a lot to shift the perspective of electric vehicles. They're no longer just eco cars for people wanting to lower their carbon footprint, but incredibly efficient, rapid off the line, performance enhancing, record breaking machines that provide drivers with endless fun. The future looks fast and the future looks electric.